In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take the first of several looks at using a tool called the Theme Designer. The Theme Designer can create some very impressive results, but it's a bit quirky, a little bit complex, and you have to learn to live within some of the design parameters of that particular tool. You notice on the screen I have populated my media room and I encourage you to do that before you get into the theme designer. You can add things once you're in there, but I just find it much more efficient to have all my videos and my still images there to start with. And if you're using a still image, I encourage you to crop it to the proportions of your project. All of mine here are 16 by 9, and that works for most of the themes in the theme designer. What I like to do is launch the program. I can do it one of two ways. I can click on the little icon of the puzzle or the word plugins at the very top. In either case, I'll get this drop down menu, and the second option launches my theme designer. Well, in one sense, it doesn't. It launches my theme picker first. That's the first screen you'll see. This screen will look at all the themes that are available in your copy of CyberLink PowerDirector. Now, when I hover on any of them and I click once, it will give me the segments of that theme in the, in the screen below. Every theme has an opening, a closing, and several options called middle, numbered numerically. In the lower left corner of each of these segments, you're going to see a blue circle. That tells you how many components are in that segment, either video or still images. If you want to see what a segment looks like, you can simply click on it, and you, you'll see it in a preview screen. This is very helpful. So what I'm going to do is play this. and we get to see how the theme works. Now, in a bit, we're going to look at titles. In the next tutorial, we're going to focus on those. I found those to be one of the most frustrating parts of the theme designer, but I discovered that when I preview it here and take some notes, I can begin to see what will fit into the title area here, because I can't control the size of the font or the context around that font. So, for example, here I wouldn't want to use uh, two or three different lines in that title or something with 18 letters. So, previewing it does help figure out not only what things look like, but how to begin to maximize your time when you're editing with the theme designer. You can pick any of the sequences in the theme and click on it and preview it right here in this screen. So that's really nice. Now I don't have to include an opening or a closing. I can pick whatever ones I like and when I'm in the theme designer I can reorder them. If I want every single thing in the theme and I know that, I simply click on the box up here in the upper right and that will select every single segment of my theme. Or I can hand pick them simply by clicking on them down here. And then when I'm all finished selecting what I want, I click on OK. Now I'm technically into my theme designer. Let me explain what you see on the screen a bit. We have on the left our media. This is right off of our media room. And if we want to add some, we can simply click on Import Media. So if I decide I want some more elements, I simply click here, it goes to my File menu, and I can load more media if I desire. We have another tab for effects. We won't be dealing with that in this tutorial. At the very top, we have the segments of our theme that we've selected. If I want to change the order of the segments, I can simply drag and drop, and that will allow me to switch them. If I want to add more to the theme, I click on this icon here, and then that will take me back to the previous screen, and I can pick more. Now in this case, maybe I wanted to pick something from the same theme, which would make a lot more sense. And maybe I want to pick uh, slide number one again. I can click on that and click on OK, and I've added it. The one thing I don't recommend doing, but you can if you want to, is include different elements from different themes. 
The problem is the theme is so tightly designed around a certain a set of design elements that it really looks alien to have one theme interfering in the middle of another theme. If a, a segment in the theme has text, you'll see some text boxes here. And we'll talk later about the best way in which to decide what to add and where and when. And then on the bottom, I really don't understand this element here, which you can enlarge, because you can't do anything with the keyframes. You can click on them, and it will give you some elements about the design, but I'm really not sure about the functionality of this component down here. We'll end this lesson by showing you ways to populate the elements in the theme. If you want to fill everything at once, you can simply click on the lower left corner for autofill. And when you click, you can fill by the library order or by using videos first. I'm going to click on that for now. And it will go through and it will populate. And now it said there's no empty spaces remaining. If I didn't have enough media, I wouldn't see this message. But now I know that I have every segment of my theme filled with media from my room. Now we can show you how to swap one for the other very easily. We'll do that next time, but this is a quick way to get started without dragging and dropping. In the next tutorial, we're going to show you a little bit about what you can do. And you notice when I hover over these, I have some different icons that may appear from time to time. I'll show you how to adjust that and do some interesting things with these once they're populated in your program as you progress in the editing. But this is how you get started. Mm -hmm.